guys, welcome back to my channel, Victoria's Creations. Today we're going to be making an apron. And this is going to be a super special project because it is going to be the first video in my new Facebook group for monthly sewing projects. In the description, I will leave a link to the free pattern along with the Facebook group. We're also going to be making this pretty cool because we're going to use up old scraps. So I have this pile of scraps on the floor. Typically you do need about 1.5 to 2 yards of fabric. But we are just going to use that lovely mess down there. I'm going to show you how to combine it to get enough to make the apron. So let's get into combining those and cutting our pattern. Okay, so here's the pattern that we have. So now we have all of our pieces here, but we have to combine them. So we're going to put the pattern to the side. And what we're going to do is we're just going to stitch them together, just pretty much in a line. So we have the first piece right here, and we have our second piece. We are just going to put them right sides together like this, stitch a line down to connect them, and then we'll open it up, take our next piece, put it right sides together, stitch a line down it to connect it. Again, open it up and then do the same thing until you have one long piece of fabric. So I'm gonna take it over to my machine, get it stitched, and I'll bring it back. So here's my fabric. I've stitched it all together and I pressed my seams open. So if you're looking, it, they're just pressed open. It's going to help with the sewing a little more once you press them open. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get ready to cut our fabric out. So I have my pattern here and it tells you to cut it on a fold. And I had a couple of people ask what that means. So basically all that means is you're going to take your fabric you're going to fold it in half, just like this. And then you're gonna take the side that says to cut on the fold and you're gonna line it up on your folded side. And then you would just cut it out just like that. So you do that for the apron part and the pocket is cut on a fold too. So you cut it out like that. And the reason we do that is to make it symmetrical. So if you were to have just one big piece and you were to cut it, it could be a little off on one side versus when you cut it on the fold, both layers are getting cut at the exact same time. So when you open it up, you have a symmetrical piece of fabric. They do that with a lot of the front of items. Corsets will do that. Some t-shirts will do that. Aprons do that a lot. So yeah, let me get this cut out and then we'll start getting into the steps. And I'll show you also how to make the strap out of your fabric instead of doing it with the um, the webbing, which I don't like buying things. I don't have webbing here. We're just gonna make it out of fabric. So let me get this cut and we'll move on. Seven, one, six. symmetrical both sides are. These are at the exact same point versus if we were to cut them separately, this could be a little higher, this could be a little lower. Our points here are the same. We know this is straight. And you can see there's all my um, press seams. So again, it's going to make it a lot easier once we get to sewing. These will be in the back side of your apron if you wanted to stitch another piece out inside it out and then top stitch it. You could do that if you don't like exposed seams. This is just an apron. It is going to get messy. I am going to probably make a new one in a few months when I destroy this one. But yes, this, this is how I use up my scraps. So we're going to put this to the side. Because right now I want to show you how to make the substitute webbing strap. So I have my extra fabric here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out one long piece. doesn't have to be a specific length. If you're like me and you get upset when there's no lengths with videos, uh, I recommend just as long as the yard. So make it 36 inches long. I'm just going to cut whatever I have here. I don't know exactly what it is because it's all scraps. But I'm going to cut it 6 inches wide by however long. So if you have a yard, 36 inches long. So let me grab my ruler 
and I'll measure it out and we'll cut it. Okay. I am just using cheap washable markers. I don't like buying chalk. It's expensive and it makes a weird so sound when you draw with it. So, markers. So, I'm going to start down here. I'm going to mark six inches. And this is not a good color for this. Then I like to come down in the middle a little. Six is here. And then down at the end, mark another six. Okay, so now, if you only have a 12 inch ruler, what you'd want to do is every 12 inches mark it six so that you can keep it straight. I have a yardstick. If you don't have a yardstick, go to Home Depot, 75 cents. Don't be me. Don't buy an expensive one from Joanne Fabrics. But now I'm just going to draw a straight line marking all of my six inch marks. And then just cut it out. This is gonna go in my scrap pile for the next time I make something. Okay, so I've got my strap part cut out, my apron part cut out, and my pocket piece. So now we're ready to get into actually sewing it. And I will go over bias tape. So on mine, I'm only gonna be using bias tape on the bottom. I'm not gonna go all over it. It is aesthetic purpose only. It is not doing anything just for looks. So it is 100% voluntary if you are going to use it or not. If you want to experiment with it, it's a good time to do it. But let's get into getting this ready to get stitched. Okay, so I'm at my sewing table. I have my apron here. So the first thing we're going to do is in step one, we're going to fold down the top of the apron and then we are going to fold it again and top stitch. So all you are doing is taking the top, you're going to fold it, and you want to press because it's going to make it a hundred times easier when you are actually sewing. And then you're going to fold it again, and then press it again. So it looks like that. So there's so your exposed end, which would fray, is now folded under. So when you stitch it, it's not going to do this fun stuff where it just frays everywhere. And like I said, if you're using scraps, you're going to have these exposed seams. So if you want to use pinking shears and do that, you can. Um, otherwise, just leave it and go with it. But I'm going to do a top stitch on here. So you'll see my top stitching. I'm going to do a zigzag stitch, give it a little bit of fun attitude. So there is my top stitching. So now we're going to move on to the next step. The next step is going to have us do the same thing, but now we're doing it on our side seams. So we're going to fold it once, press it, fold it again, and top stitch on both sides.
now your apron should look like this. You got your two side seams are nice and tucked in so you won't have any fraying and your top. So keep with the pattern here so we can follow along. Okay, so now it is telling us to do the same thing on the bottom. So let's do that. Okay, so now you've finished all of your edges except these ones here. So we're going to start to make our pocket for our webbing or our strap that we're going to make in a minute. So it tells you for step number five and number four. It wants you to do a zigzag stitch here. So it says it's going to do it to strengthen the sides and keep it from unraveling. So why not do it? Let's go ahead and give it a quick zigzag on both sides. So I did a zigzag stitch across my exposed seams. Now it wants us to fold it and press it, just like we did with the first time, but we're not going to double fold it. We're only going to fold it once. So now we're going to make the casing for the webbing. So I like to do this with a ruler because I'm not someone who measures everything. As you can see, I'm just kind of folding over and going. So go ahead, grab your ruler. We're going to flip it back over. And then we're going to take the ruler and just place it like that. And then give it a good fold. And now you know this is an inch. And then go ahead and press it. And this is one, an inch and one fourth, so then I'm just going to bring it over just a little more to make up for that one fourth that we're going to stitch. Okay, now we're going to edge stitch this. And you're going to stitch it on this side. So you're not going to stitch it here. You're going to stitch it here because the casing or the um, piece of fabric is going to go in here. So give it a stitch to, to, as close to this as you can get and then do the same thing on the other side. is what your apron's gonna look like if you wanted to do a fun little contrast zigzag you could have here i just did a straight stitch um but yep that's what the front of our fabric our apron is gonna look like so i'm gonna fold this and put it away and then i'm gonna show you how to make the casing or i'm sorry the strap so here's my strap piece the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it in half right sides out like this and press it so you make a crease in it all the way down to the other end. So I've pressed it all the way down. Now you're going to open it back up because now you have a nice little crease here to go off of. You're then going to take it and you're going to fold one side in right up to that crease and you're going to press it all the way down and then you turn around and you're going to do the same exact thing on the other side. Seven, one, six. You have 
have this long piece that you folded twice on the inside. So now you're just going to take the part with the raw edge, you're gonna fold it in just a little bit, give it a press, and then you are just going to fold the whole thing in half, just like this. And then you're gonna go all the way down to the other end. When you get to this end, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna fold in a little piece of it, press it, fold it, and then go ahead and iron it. Okay, so now you have this long piece. You are going to edge stitch it on each edge. So you're gonna stitch it as close to possible on this side, and then close to possible on this side. You can get fun with it. You can do any type of stitch you want. I'm gonna do a zigzag stitch. So let me get that stitched and I'll bring it back. Seven, one, six. strap so easier way to make it than using webbing because it's free and you can use scraps so let's move on to putting it in the apron and then we'll start on the pocket and then we'll do the bias tape okay so here's my apron I got my strap and I ended I had to use the two to make it longer so now we have to push this through here so your best friend is just a safety pin so just fold it open up your pin stick it through your fabric and really push it through there close it and then when you put it through here you can now use the pin to shimmy it down so I'm going to shimmy this side through, and then I'll shimmy this side through here, and then we'll have our apron ready to be tied. And then we'll move on to the next step. Seven, one, six. strap through our casing now we are ready to add our pocket so we're gonna flip it open like this got my pocket so now we have to make it so that we can actually put it on the apron without having all of these ends here which could fray so what you do put our apron to the side is you are going to just fold it over just like how you did earlier Fold it, press it, and then you want to fold it again and press it, and then you want to stitch it. Seven, one, so this is going to be the top of the pocket and the reason we edge stitched this right off the beginning is because when we stitch these sides to the apron we're not going to be stitching this down because we have to be able to put our hand in there so now we're going to fold in and press our other sides but we're not going to stitch right away so let me fold and press So that 
that's what our pocket looks like. Now we're ready to stitch it on to our apron. So let me slide that over here, grab my apron. Okay, so all I did was I centered the pocket on the apron and then I stitched my three sides. So from here, down, down here, up here, leaving this entire top part open. So now that's on there. And now you can choose how many pockets you want to have. So you can have as many as you want. You can have a little one, you can have a big one, you can have three. I'm just going to do one right down my crease. So I don't have to do any measurements. I see the crease, just sew along it. So let me do that real quick. Seven, one, six. So there's my pocket, my two pockets. And again, you can make as many pockets as you want out of this. If you even want to add a pocket on the top, you can um, measure it however big you want it. Just throw it on there. Let's move on to putting on our bias tape on the bottom. So I got my bias tape here. Um, it's just five yards, 100% cotton. I It's single fold. Um, I'm just using something that I had gotten off of Facebook Marketplace. Somebody was selling a bunch of it. You know it's old because it's 25 cents a pack. What is it now at the store? It's like three, four dollars. So let's go ahead and open this up. And it gives you handy dandy little instructions too if you've never used it before. And look, an apron. So if you wanted to do it, a quick trick apron from a dish towel. Interesting. Maybe you guys want to do that sometime. We'll see. But either way, here it is. So it is single fold, like it says. So basically what bias tape is, is when we were making our strap, it's a, it's a larger form of bias tape, except it's not cut on the bias. So when you have a piece of fabric, you would cut diagonal, and that would be called cutting on the bias. So example, if this was a piece, of, just a big piece of fabric, you would want to cut this way and then you're cutting it on the bias and that's basically what bias tape is it's a little stretchier so what you want to do is just figure out how much you're going to want so we're only doing it on the bottom just for fun so we want that there so i'm going to go ahead and cut that then we can put this off to the side so on your bias tape, one side is going to be longer than the other, and it's really hard to see it in, on camera, but this side is a little longer than this side. So we're ready to play with our bias tape. So when you leave it out like this, it's going to have folds, just like how we did with our strap. So what you're going to do is on the right side, of your apron because this is gonna go right along the bottom here you're going to open one side of it and pin it along the bottom all the way down Seven, one, six. so I've pinned it all the way down the bottom so you have your crease in your in the middle here you're gonna sew on the right side of the crease so i'm going to stitch just on the right side all the way down Seven, one, six. So it's going to look like this on the bottom. You're just going to take the other uh, side, unfold it, wrap it around, and just over your other side, and then just stitch it all the way down. Seven, one, six.
And there's your bias tape. My stitching isn't the prettiest. I decided to go with black. I should have did pink, but um, you can do it with any stitch you want and it just adds like a little bit of extra color. It actually kind of looks pretty cute with the extra pink on there. But let me go ahead and put this on and show you what it looks like. Okay guys, so here's the apron that we were working on. I hope you guys had fun. You got to use a bunch of your scraps. I can't wait to see what you guys put together with all of your lovely materials. And please like and subscribe if you like this video. I look forward to our next monthly craft. Thank you again.